She doesn't allow that to discourage her. And Jesus' words, it isn't right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Seems so much unlike all the other things that Jesus did or said. That's why I know he had a reason in it and a purpose in this to show her great faith was the key to his heart. She had faith. And so she didn't accept denial of, of the request for her children. Now the disciples took another whole tack than Jesus. They were urging him, saying, send her away. She cries out after us, but Jesus answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's got to be discouraging to her. She knows he's the one. I need help from him. The disciples are trying to get him to send me away. I need help from Jesus. He's the one. And then he says, but I was sent to the Israelites, not the Canaanites. Did she give up? No. No. She wasn't done with Jesus yet. And she does something amazing. She had humility. Do you all understand how important it is to humble yourself before God? The woman humbled herself. She could have gotten angry, hostile, screamed at him, yelled at him, accused him. She could have said all kinds of things. Well, you're the one that's got all the power. Why aren't you helping me? Why do you help them and you don't help me? Did she do that? No. Could have. She might have felt like, why aren't you listening to me? Why are you rejecting me? You're the only one. And she humbled herself. When he said it's not good to take the children's bread, we're talking about the Israelites, and throw it to the little dogs. And she, she, he just compared her to a dog. And she said, yes, Lord, even the little dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Now, we have a dog, and she's a wonderful dog. She doesn't beg. I call her my hunting dog. She's my hunting dog. One night she was at the door, and she was barking and wanted to get out. We let her out in the front yard. She went out in the front, and she treed three raccoons in the front tree. <laughs> One dog treed three raccoons. Now, she's a pretty bold dog to go out after three raccoons. I've, I've seen a pack of hounds it takes to get one, but she had three up the tree. Tom saw it, right? And when I said, look up here, there's three bandits looking down at us. That's my dog, but she likes to lay there or sit there, and she's quiet. It's a smart dog. She doesn't beg too much. <laughs> Just uses her eyes. Sometimes she'd come up and lay her head on your knee like she wants, a, wants something, but she was begging. The woman was begging, and it was making Jesus think, he, see, he knows everything, relates everything to everything, so he's like, even, even the dogs. And <laughs> so, so here's, here's Jesus, and here's this woman, and she's begging, and like my doggie, she, she's not loud, and she doesn't come up and put push on you or anything, but she's persistent. She'll lay there and just watch. Because she knows she wants something and she's got to get it from us and she doesn't give up begging even if we say no or reject her or what, don't pay any attention to her. She just keeps begging. This woman understood that. And God is faithful to his people, isn't he? Even when his own people are not faithful to him. Don't we always say dogs are like man's best friend? Because they're faithful, that's why. It's because they're always there, consistent. Even if you stepped on their foot, they still love you. They still whack your tail when you come home. They still follow you around. They still mostly do the things that you ask them to do. And great mothers will beg to get what their children need. And they'll deny themselves in order to provide for their own children. And great mothers worship God and they seek His help. Because in my definition of a great mother is a woman who has humbled herself before God, put her faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as her Savior. She seeks to be a woman who follows the Lord. She's a disciple. She wants to follow Jesus. She prays for her own needs and the needs of her family. She prays that her children will be saved. 
She witnesses to her children. She tries to provide for her children the best that she can, even with limited resources. And she'll do whatever she can to try to make sure her children get a fair shot at life, at education. When I grew up, my, my family was fairly poor. Uh, like probably many of you, we didn't have a whole lot. But my mom would uh, make things. If we couldn't afford to buy what you used to call store-bought clothes, right? She couldn't afford to buy store-bought clothes, so she would go down and buy fabric on sale, and then she would make clothes for us. I didn't know any difference, so I wore, I wore all the time when I was growing up shirts that my mother made for me. She could size me, and she knew how to just size you up, and then she could go cut out the cloth and make a shirt for you, and it had pockets and a collar and buttons, and it worked. <laughs> she made a suit for me one time. She was quite a seamstress. She could sew about anything. But my mother did whatever it took to try to take care of us kids, even though we didn't have much. And then she came and she worshipped Jesus. And I think that part is so amazing. What does it say? She came and worshipped him. She was seeking help from the Lord, and the first thing she did was worship. And then she says, simple, Lord, help me. She could have just said, Lord, help. Wasn't about to give up. I know that mothers in this room that have been there, or your mother or your grandmother has been there. Lord, help. And she confesses her need to the Lord. She knew where to go. And in this time, she knew there was no other place to go. There was no social agency that she could go to and say, uh, where do I fill out the application for the, for the one who will kick the demons out of my child? There was no such agency anyway, neither could any agency have done it. There was only one person who could do it, and his name is Jesus. She went to him. Great mothers know they have great spiritual needs. Just because you're a great mother doesn't mean that you can do everything yourself. You may very well understand that you need God to help you get through every day, every moment, to meet every need that you have. She, I get great mother, like every other man, woman, boy, or girl, is a sinner. And she would be an unworthy sinner before God except for her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who forgives us and cleanses us of all unrighteousness so that we can boldly approach the throne of grace and mercy. And she humbly admits her hopelessness without God, and she begs God for grace and mercy, and she's even willing to say, Jesus, I'll take the crumbs. If all you'll give me is crumbs, I'll take the crumbs. I need the crumbs for my child. Help me. Help me. I can see her just kneeling there before him and saying, Lord... Help me. And what follows is the most beautiful display of compassion. And the disciples see what real faith looks like. And they get to see a demonstration of the great compassion and power of Jesus Christ. When he said, I was sent only the lost sheep of Israel, then she didn't give up. Yes, Lord, even the dogs eat the crumbs. And the faith of a great mother gains God's approval and help because the Lord sees you and he sees me and he knows of our faith and he knows about the needs we have. And when we have needs and we bring our needs to him, the Lord Jesus Christ is able to meet us at every point of need. And so the Lord grants her request. Jesus answered her and he said to her, this is an amazing change. Watch the shift in his language and the answer he gives. He says, Oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. 